every time there is tension in the world, such as the president declaring Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And when Russia starts saber-rattling, everyone thinks of Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39. Gog being what many think is Russia today, and that World War III is about to happen. World War III could happen, but it will not be the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39. And here's what Gog says about it. Not God, but Gog. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 11. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. First off, since Israel's so-called resurrection or their birth in 1948, they have never been at peace, and I doubt they ever will, since most of them have rejected the true Messiah, and they still do. The Bible makes it clear about unregenerate man of all nationalities and races. Romans chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. If that's not enough, then the next part of Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 11, should be a clincher on what we call a clincher statement. Here it is. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. We all know that America and Israel are in the age of walls. Walls for security, walls for protection, and walls to keep those out from illegally immigrating. Can you guess how many miles of walls that Israel has? I'll just tell you, it's a whopping 440 miles, at least when it's finally completed. I guess it's still under construction. That is not villages, Ezekiel mentioned, without walls. That is villages with lots of walls. Now, I cannot tell you when Ezekiel 38 and 39 event will take place. It's kind of like the rapture of the church. Only God really knows. Right now, I think it happens at the end of the millennial reign or kingdom of Christ. If you read that passage of scripture, it says Satan is released. Satan is released and goes after Israel, who had been, for the most part, been at peace under the rule of Christ for a thousand years. Satan brings Gog and Magog against Israel to destroy that little nation. Revelation chapter 20, verses 8 through 9. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now compare that with Ezekiel 38, verse 22. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and great hailstone, fire and brimstone. Well, one thing that verse in Revelation 20, verses 8 through 9 it goes to prove that even in the millennial age of Christ, there will still be the unsaved, unregenerate people inhabiting the earth. Well, anyway, we learn that the intervention of God with fire from heaven will bring about a national revival throughout the whole world. In Ezekiel 38, verse 23, God says, Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Well, whatever you believe about Gog and Magog and Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39, you should also really believe this in Luke chapter 17, verses 26 through 29. 
And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. The only way to prepare from coming destruction is by trusting in Christ. We can be certain that God will deliver us from the wrath which is to come. Sure, the four horsemen are out there running to and fro and causing destruction, but for the most part, these will be times before the flood, times before the destruction of Sodom, a time where you can eat and drink, a time when lovers marry and have lots of kids. However, when you do such things, always trust in God through Christ so that we may be ready to be raptured into the clouds to meet Christ in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If World War III does happen, then it's possible that it will kill most of us and keep many of us from eating, drinking, marrying, selling, planting, and reaping. I believe we are in the last days before the flood of God's wrath. I believe it's the last day before the departure out of Sodom. A time a small wars and rumors of wars, but for the most part it's a time of living as we do every day observing the news, but not being part of the news by being destroyed by a worldwide war. Living, but not in no immediate danger, working for high or low wages and yet surviving, marrying and being divorced, giving birth to building families, and for some, denying birth to the unborn and destroying the hopes of their offspring. For some, it's the time to become rich, and yet many will remain poor. Some of you will have hope for the future, while others will have gloom in the present day. However you live, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever and ever. Let me end today with Psalms 136, verse 5 through 11. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. This is Larry Zorro. God bless. You have a great one. See you. Bye. Jesus, Jesus, praise you, Lord, in every way. Jesus, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, in every day. You're the one that came for me. You're the one that gives liberty. You're the one that loves me. You're the one that set me free. Hallelujah! Jesus, Jesus, praise you, Lord, in every way. Jesus, Jesus, I thank you, God, every day. 